Today is called Palm Sunday. And the reason it's called Palm Sunday is it is the day that Christ makes his triumphant entrance into Jerusalem. And for hundreds of years, it had been foretold that this great king was going to come and save them from oppression and from their political leaders and from all these things. And so this is the day and it had been foretold of in Zechariah. It says, behold, your king comes to you triumphant and victorious. He is humble and riding on an ass on a colt, the foal of an ass. And so it's been foretold that this is the way he's going to come in. So he's been doing all these miracles we know all around um, Jerusalem. And now it's time to come riding in. I'm actually the guy you've been waiting for. So as he comes in, people line the road. They're taking palm leaves. They're waving them. They're throwing their coats on the ground. He's walking in. They're saying Hosanna. They're saying hallelujah. It's this really exciting time because this savior has come to basically, they think, save them from the oppression, not to save them from sin, not to literally save their eternal lives. But they're like, oh, this is the guy that's going to save us, right? Okay, so a couple things about the donkey. One is in the ancient Middle Eastern world, leaders came in on horses when they were going to war to show their power. Like, here I am, the leader going to war, you know? And when a leader would come in on a donkey, then that was a sign of humility and they're coming in peace. And so the savior riding in, not as this, you know, person coming to wipe everybody out, but coming in on a donkey as a sign of peace was very special. And do you know where he got the donkey? I didn't know. How did I miss this story? I don't know. But Christ and his disciples are at the Mount of Olives. And he tells two of his disciples, go into this town ahead of us and you're going to see a donkey and a horse tied to a tree. Just untie him and take him. And if anyone bugs you about it, just say, hey, the Lord needs them and they'll give them to you right away. And so this is what they do. And the disciples go down and they untie this donkey. And the guy comes out and he's like, what are you doing? Taking my animals. And they said, oh, the Lord needs them. And he says, go ahead. So this is something that made me think. And how do we apply this to our life, right? How quickly are we to do what somebody asks in the name of the Lord? Like to do your calling or to follow a prompting or to be... Um, positive when we want to be negative or to follow the savior when it's hard. I thought, what a cool story that this person just said, yeah, sure. Take it. Right. Okay. I'm going to tell you a story. And it's not like, Ooh, look at how great I am. It is. Look at what happens when you give your donkeys. Okay. So I had this feeling one time that I needed to um, give some money to a person in my ward that I didn't even know very well. And so it was more money than I thought I had to give. And I thought it was strange, but I just did it. And, and there kind of wasn't a way to secretly give that much money in town. So I just Venmoed this person, like, Shh, don't tell anybody. And they wrote back, how did you know that I didn't have money for rent this month? And I didn't know, but Christ knew, right? And so I gave it. And then like two days later, my husband got a bonus out of nowhere at work. That was the exact amount that I gave that person. I wonder what happened to the guy that gave the donkey and the horse to Jesus. Did he come back the next day and there were five donkeys and five horses? Because if I know Jesus and I feel like I do, that's probably what happened. Because whenever we sacrifice for the Lord, whenever we do what he asks, I swear he pays us back fivefold. I swear that he doesn't let us go hungry. He doesn't let us go without. When we sacrifice to do what he asks, he always blesses us. It's like in Mosiah when it says like, if he blesses you and you try to do something back, he immediately blesses you again and you can never get ahead. So um, I'm grateful for that story of the donkey because it does remind me how great Jesus is. And some of these stories, I wish we just knew the end because I believe that's what happened for that guy. So 
Elder Gong made a great observation about this hallelujah versus Hosanna. I didn't know this either. So this is why we're learning stuff on Palm Sunday. It's exciting, right? Okay, Elder Gong said, Hosanna means save us now, save now. And at Easter, we sing hallelujah, and that means praise the Lord Jehovah. So this is what he says. The sacred events between Palm Sunday and Easter Sunday are the story of Hosanna and hallelujah. Hosanna is our plea for God to save. And hallelujah expresses our praise to the Lord for the hope of that salvation and exaltation. In Hosanna and hallelujah, we recognize the living Jesus Christ as the heart of Easter and Latter-day Restoration. And I just thought that was cool. I didn't, I didn't know the difference, but um, Hosanna is save us. It's not, I thought it was more of a praise, praise. It's like, save us, please save us. And then hallelujah is you did, you came, you gave your life, you sacrificed to save me. So hallelujah, right? I, ah, I like the difference in that. And last, I want to show you a little bit about, I got a palm frond and I'm going to tell you a little bit about waving hallelujah and hosanna with the palm leaves. So hold please. I live in Arizona and we have lots of palm trees around. So I got one and I wanted to show you something that I know about palm trees and it's this. This is what these branches look like. They have all of these thorns on it. So if I'm going to grab a palm thing, that's going to be hard and it's going to hurt. So I'm going to probably have to gently cut all of these off before I can go waving them anywhere. And this is a small one, right? Sometimes I imagine in my mind those great, great big long ones, right? And everybody's shaking these things. And I wonder, when your mom said, hey, Jesus is coming into town, we're gonna welcome him, would you have gone Ah, I don't want to cut those things off. Waving palm fronds hurts my hands. Ugh, I already listened to him. I already sat on the Sermon on the Mount listened for hours, Mom. I don't know if I am impressed by that guy. What has he ever done for me? That's going to hurt. That's a sacrifice. I don't know that I want to go. I'll catch the next one, right? And so my thoughts are, how much effort do we put in? to following Jesus, to praising Jesus, to giving him our love and our respect and our time? Would we have lined the path? Would we have thrown our brand new shirt down on the ground for him, his donkey to walk across? Would we have um, taken the time to go? Or are we too busy for the Lord? Because I think sometimes things are hard and I don't wanna to go to that meeting. Waving palm fronds might not have been easy. Going, visiting, teaching, doing your ministering, taking dinner to someone, going and helping clean out the hoarder's house, um, maybe even taking care of your own family. Maybe you've got sick loved ones. Whatever it is where we're asked to give up some of our time and our talents to serve the Lord, I hope that we remember how loved the Savior felt as everybody, as he rode into town and people were cheering because he knew that pretty soon after this, there wasn't going to be a lot of cheering and that the crowd was going to turn on him. And so um, I hope that in my mind, I never think it's too hard. And I hope that when I'm asked to serve or help or do my part to show the Lord that I love him, that I will go and I will scrape off the thorns and I will wave the things and I will throw off my favorite orange and white sweater onto the ground if that's what he asks. So I think it's exciting. I think the palm leaves are interesting. And I don't know what I'm going to do with this now. Maybe I should put it in a little vase. Maybe I'll put it in a vase for tomorrow. But okay, last thing. Here's the activity for today. I, if you have kids and children, I think it would be great to recreate the entry into the city. Because we, we do the the night before we do when Christ was born, right? Like all of the dawn, you know, like the Mary and Joseph and the star and the wise men. So why don't we do this triumphal entry and get dad or one of the siblings on the ground as a donkey, put another person on the back, go into town, everybody else in your house, like 
you know, wave the palm leaves or take a pillowcase or, you know, take a pickleball paddle, whatever. Like wave the person in, cheer, do all the things. Make a big deal out of it. And um, if you're alone and you can't do that, then I encourage you, draw a picture of palm leaves or if you've, and put it on your fridge or take a picture off of the internet and print it out and put it on the fridge um, or get a branch and put it in a jar. Something to remind you of the beginning of this week of sacrifice of the Savior and um, the highs and the lows of things that happen. Um, and also think about that donkey. Think about what has the Lord asked you to do and how quick and willing are you to do that thing. So that's all for day one. Okay, and last thing, if you guys do a really fun recreation of the entry, please email them to me at melanie at melaniewstroud.com and I will put them on my Instagram because I think that would be so fun to see. So if you do it, let me know. I'm missing a meeting right now because there's a party at my house and I feel really bad. There's like a celebration in my steak and, and I can't go because I have a birthday party here. But, see, I just admitted there's a problem, but I'm gonna erase that. I'm sure I'll take that out. But anyway. <laughs>